I'm a member, original member of the Jewels. We are performing over 50 years. We started back in 60, actually we started back in high school. And uh, we all met at Roosevelt High School. We had the opportunity to perform at the Howard Theater, uh, probably about four times. That was really good. Um, our first record was, uh, they brought us to the Howard Theater, was loaded with goodies. And um, I have some pictures, you may get to see them, you may not, I'm not sure. But, <laughs> but uh, we performed at the Howard Theater, and to perform at the Howard Theater was like the ultimate. Because, I mean, you, would, you come here as a kid in school to see other artists. So to actually get on the stage and be one of the artists was just terrific. I remember when I did used to come to the Howard Theater to see shows, uh, there's a uh, back door where you look to see who's coming out that door, what star is coming out that door. So I happened to see Clyde McFadder, and I had a bop, uh, popcorn box top. Could you please sign this, sign this, sign this? And I kept it for 10 years. I have no clue where it is now, but it was important then, you know, I don't know, okay? <laughs> and uh, so the, to perform there and have all our, our family and friends to come and see us, I mean, it was just, just great, just great. Well, I never performed at you the never house. Really never did? performed, well, no, 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 no. I learned my craft here. Okay, okay. But I never performed in front of a live audience here, but when the, when the theater would close down at night, uh huh. And everybody was going home. I performed. <laughs> well, you did perform here, right? right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. I dance out here and sing and, you know, imagine, you know, whatever. And I took it on to another level. Back, <laughs> backstage, usually when we would perform with other artists, this is a, this is a entertainer thing. When you would perform with other artists, you you got to be friends. You know, you would have you know go and eat a meal together and talk about home and your hometown stuff. So. On the last night of the performance, that's when you would act silly also. So we would be out on stage singing, here come one of the temptations pushing the broom across the stage. And everybody would be cracking, I was like, what's going on? And that's, that's the way that we'd come out and maybe do something silly too or whatever. So, you know, you just became a family because you knew once you left the Howard Theater for a week, you would be going to the Royal Theater in Baltimore. So you'd be with them another week. I got so many memories. As I said, this was our babysitter, so. As my father worked keeping Jimmy and those guys in line outside and, <laughs> and trying to keep guys from sneaking in the back door, I guess he was pretty unsuccessful because everybody <laughs> I know it. says they snuck <laughs> in that <laughs> door. So I don't know, wow. I don't know wow. how that works. Boy. Boy. Yeah, but uh, Dad, uh, um, he did many, many years here. Uh, um, I'm sure he'd be proud to see me on the stage right I'm now. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure he would be. Down the street from me, Billy Stewart used to live. Wow. And we used to see each other every day and then finally he was appearing here at the Howard Theater and I uh, accompanied him on the guitar. And then during the time I was playing with Billy Stewart, the Manhattans, they were on the same show. And back then, this was around 60, 1966, 67, they had a record out called Searching for My Baby. Yeah. And that one song had a very important guitar part. But the Manhattans back in those days, they didn't have a guitar player. So when it was, whenever they sang that song and that guitar part was missing, it, it got to the point where I couldn't stand it no more. I had to, <laughs> so I, I just had my guitar okay. hooked up backstage. I didn't ask nobody nothing. I just started playing that one lick. Down, 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 down. And that's how I got the gig with the Manhattans. My first experience is uh, Howard Theater. You know, used to hang around backstage here, like I say, about 14 years old. Uh huh. You know, I was fascinated with the music business. And, and where were you living at that time uh, here? I was living city? down the street of Fifth okay. and P. Okay. Northwest, a couple okay. blocks. You know, I could actually walk here. Okay. You know, sure. Anytime sure. I wanted to. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, those were my early experiences coming here to see the shows. Okay, and who were some of the artists that you were, were listening to as you were hanging oh, out? Oh, wow. Yeah. The artists, wow. I mean, everybody. The Drifters, the, the Drifters, Clyde McFadder, the Coasters, like you said, James Brown, Moms Mabley. Baby uh, Washington. Baby Washington, okay. the Intruders. Okay. Right, right. Now, uh, Donna Washington. Oh, wow. Okay. Brooke Benton. Jeez. Dakota Staten. Mm, 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 mm. Gloria Lynn. Nancy Wilson, uh, Miles Davis, Bobby Blue Bland, Joe Simon, Jimmy McCracken, the Five Royals. I mean, we can go wow. on and on. I saw oh, them all right here on this stage. This is really awesome. And, and again, you could see 
that uh, there was a, a mix of, 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 of blues, rhythm and blues, soul, and jazz. Right, right. And that, that you could hear all different artists performing right. here on the Howard Every week, stage. Like they'd have a blues yeah. show coming this week for a week, Bobby Blue okay. Bland, B.B. Right. Uh, King, Five Royals, and the next week they'd have the rock and roll show come in with the Coasters, Bo sure. Diddley, Baby yeah. Washington, Shepner Limelight. Okay, okay. Uh, I used to go to school at Banneker Junior High School, which is about three blocks north of here. Uh, after school, I would come to shows at the Howard because my mom was a single parent, my father was dead, and the Howard Theater was actually the babysitting service for me. Uh, and so she would allow me to come to the Howard. Uh, at that time, they used to have a 4.30 show, a 7 o'clock show, and a 10 o'clock show. And so I would come to the 4.30 show and see all of the greats from the Supremes to people that you don't remember, like Pygmy Markham and Moms Mabley. Um, I used to see Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, Gladys Knight and the Pips, uh, Marvin Gaye. So all the greats uh, were at 4.30 shows, uh, and this was during the time period between 62 and 64. Uh, and so we would come and, uh, and see all of those shows, not knowing that we were seeing history being made. James Brown, I mean, if you, you name them, they came uh, to the Howard Theater back in those days. Well, the Howard Theater for me, my first memory of it was back in the 1960s. I was about 11 or 12 years old. And my uncle Rudy, I remember his, he wasn't a real uncle, but he was uh, my, my godmother's son. So I ended up calling him Uncle Rudy. He took me to the Howard Theater and I was not supposed to be there. I was only 11, 12 years old, and Red Fox was performing. Red Fox in the 1960s was, would give R-rated, maybe some people say X-rated in those days, type shows. But um, I remember Red Fox making all the audience laugh, and the place was packed out. It was dark, you know, when the show was on, so nobody noticed that this little 11 or 12-year-old guy was in there. But the real memory I had, the, the more striking thing I remember, was between the shows. They had this um, lady who came out scantily clad. She had on a bikini type top. She had a boa type bottom with the ostrich feathers shaking. And she, it was red. I remember it was all red. And she had this beautiful skin. And boy, was she built. And she danced up and down the aisle. And of course, all the guys in the audience were, you know, just petrified watching her and not moving and I this young kid had my eyes open and so big I just couldn't get over it so that was the the, the time that I came to the house I was really young um, to have seen you know the, the people like Sammy Davis Jr. or or Pearl Bailey or uh, even the Supremes um, when they first came I wasn't really uh, I was only like 16 17 years old it was real music it was a full orchestra, it was, you know, live music, nothing taped, mm -hmm. no, no lip syncing. Um, everyone mm -hmm. showed up, everyone was dressed, I mean, you know, tuxedos, it was, it was totally different. I mean, than it is now. Yeah. But, I mean, it was just great, you know, I, was, I saw, oh, you name it, from Smokey Robinson to the Marvelettes to Diana Reeves um, and the Vandellas. Um, Chuck Jackson, mm. Moms Mabley. I mean, you know, just everyone came here. Everyone came to the Howard Theater. I remember the smell, overwhelming smell of popcorn, and they had some of the best popcorn. Because once in a while, before I ever came to the Howard, my brother, who was 11 years older than me, would bring back some popcorn that he had had from the theater. He would let me have it. And so I just couldn't wait to go to the Howard Theater. My mother, who is 90 now, in her heyday, this was the place. Billy Eckstein, Sarah Vaughn, Pearl Bailey. And Pearl Bailey lived in our neighborhood um, on Irving Street, uh, Northeast. So, you know, I just was just in awe. This was a place that, you heard about the legends, Duke Ellington, all of the best, you know, Miles Davis, the best musicians, they were all here. And my mom came here and she would talk about the lounge adjacent or next door Cecilia's. You know, I couldn't wait to grow up. I just, God, let this place be there. 
So can, can you imagine how hurt I was as I turned 18 um, in 68, then the place was gone. When I can, you know, finally go and go hang out at Cecilia's, go to the Howard Theater, see the show, then go next door, it's gone. So I just couldn't wait for restoration, you know, and I'm, I'm just very thankful that someone was able to do it. My earliest memory of the Howard is as a child. My grandparents brought me here to see Mom's Mabley. I have only a really vague recollection of it, but this is what they tell me happened, that Mom's Mabley saw me, she said, oh my, what a beautiful baby. They say she tucked a dollar bill like here and said to my grandparents, don't let the child grow up to be a stripper. <laughs> okay. There's an awful lot of history right here in this area with Howard University, you know, uh, the college here and, and um, the Howard Theater. I mean, I guess anything that was Howard was, you know, very, very special because, you know, a, a lot of, uh, again, I must say, blood, sweat, and tears was put into it to make it possible, you know, um, um, with all the different artists who would come through here. I mean, at one point, black artists could not go a lot of many places that, you know, white artists could go, and or they had to go under certain stipulations. Even back in the time we were on the road with James Brown, there were places where we couldn't go in, you know, and uh, even before we got with James Brown to think about it, we uh, performed at a place um, where we were supposed to stay there, but for some reason the lights in our room went out. I mean, just crazy stuff that would happen that we had not experienced living here in D.C., mostly when you went down south or whatever, but, you know, it's just stuff that young people need to know, not, not for hurt purposes, but just for history. You know, know your history, you know, know a, a little bit about, you know, what, what took place for you to get where you are now, you know, and, and um, uh, I guess, you know, the Howard Theater and the whole area was just a, uh, um, a learning spot, to put it that way. While a graduate student at Howard uh, University, I would pass by this uh, old beat up building and, you know, never thought much about it at all. And uh, through a very serendipitous route, wound up uh, running for office um, <clears throat> and learning about the community that uh, I was to represent. And I began to hear these wonderful stories about, uh, for example, Ella Fitzgerald, uh, first uh, uh, amateur night happened here and not in uh, Apollo in Manhattan. And I'm like, geez, how I, you know, why haven't I heard of the Howard Theater? And so the stories kept growing, 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 growing. And uh, then I had a young fellow by the name of Chip Ellis. And he's a, you know, I'm not that old, but he uh, came uh, to visit me because I was the Civic uh, Association president for LaDroit Park. And he came to visit me and he's like, I'm Chip and uh, Howard Theater is in your neighborhood, in your district, and we'd like to talk to you about re revitalization of the theater. So um, my learning process about its history and CHIP kind of stars were aligned and collided and uh, we began uh, advocacy in a real earnest campaign uh, to revitalize the theater. We can really get philosophical, but you know, I'm clear that um, you don't know where you're going until you know where you've been. And for people to have a sense of um, that in 1910, when this place was built, black people could not go anywhere else but to a place that was built just for them. And to see what's occurred in 100 years, 112 years, the kind of changes that have occurred, it shows people what's possible. It, um, it, it shows people how people thought and acted at a different time. And uh, I think it's, it's important to also just honor the entertainers, to honor the people who were um, um, pioneers, if you will, and people who were progressive back then and able to, to uh, express their talent and show their talent and make a difference and, and uh, entertain people back then. So I think you want to be able to see that 
and see where we're going as a result. This is like a dream come true as an, as an uh, still I'm a performing artist and as a, a local musician to be able to see this venue in its glory today in year 2012, it's just magnificent. I watched it go down, and then when the go-go bands came in, who, I remember the guy who came in, I'm not gonna call his name, but it was supposed to have been the reopening of the Howard Theater, and they, they splashed black paint all over the theater and opened the doors, and it was failure written all over the place. You know, there's a certain energy that keeps us going, keeps us alive. And I know the ancestors was like, turning over back in that time because of the, the caliber of entertainment that was on the stage. But I want you all to know the ancestors are alive and well, and you see the pictures on the walls. They are all in jubilation that this theater has come back into the form and that it is today. This is a hallelujah time for live entertainment here in the District of Columbia.